welcome to today's episode of the Declutter Hub podcast, your channel for super easy, no-nonsense advice on how to declutter and organise your home. Please welcome your hosts, professional organisers Ingrid Jansen and Leslie Spellman. Hello and welcome listeners to episode 135 of the Declutter Hub podcast. I'm Ingrid. And I'm Leslie. If you have clutter and want to sort it out, this is the show for you. Now in today's episode, Leslie and I are talking about why digital clutter needs to be tackled too. Now and you can probably hear it in my voice, I'm already laughing because I know Leslie is going to tell you that I am keeping far too too much digital clutter. So I have to listen to my own advice. I think that I get into this podcast. (laughs) Yes, we'll come to that later. You're not going to, you're not good. You're not going to come out of this podcast unscathed. That's all I'm saying. (laughs) But we'll, we'll talk about Ingrid versus Leslie on the digital clutter later, (laughs) won't we Ingrid? Yes. So, (laughs) So first of all, before we get started, we need to talk about what is digital clutter? Ingrid. We just thought, oh, it's just emails and a couple of files and maybe some photos. And then we kind of started making a list and we we kind of the one thing after the other kind of came like, yeah, it's like having lots of apps on your phone and it's all these documents and it's all these things on your sky books or your Virgin Media books that you're meaning to watch. And it's maybe even your wish list on Amazon or your logins, your contacts on your phone. Um too many friends on Facebook, LinkedIn contacts that you even wonder, do I actually know these people? You know, it's it's all just too much. It's not about 15,000 emails alone, is it? It's just an overload of everything, right? Yeah, and the interesting thing is, Ingrid, that it's very different in our minds. It's very different, isn't it, to physical clutter? And so, you know, that's what we want to talk about today is, we need to get a grip of the digital clutter as well as the physical clutter in our lives as well, because it's important. But you can kind of forget about it, can't you? Because it just sits there on your computer or on your phone and it doesn't really bother you and it doesn't stop you from sitting down. It doesn't fall out on top of you every time you open a cupboard. You know, it doesn't do all those things that physical clutter do. It's very, very different. I think it's fair to say that there's not many people who've got this completely nailed. But let's lay our cards on the table, Ingrid, and talk about you and I in the digital clutter world. And can you see how I'm a bit like, (laughs) but I know she's going to come back to me, but Ingrid is a complete overkeeper of most things, most things. I can't really get her to delete many things. (laughs) And of course we work together. And so we have to make combined decisions about things that we keep so come clean Ingrid tell us about the kind of things that you would keep oh yeah I, I, especially emails I, I save a lot <laughs> I, I mean I delete a lot of them I mean oh my word I mean then you see me with the delete button but I'm I'm on the cautious side so if I think hmm that might come in handy one day or that might kind of, I want to, not that I think I've ever read it again, but I think if there's going to be something, I can search where I've got that. So I've got like this really nice folder system in my email inboxes. I've got folders in my computer, my drives, you know, but yes, you are right. I do kind of should press the delete button a little bit more often than I am currently am. When you say a little bit more often, (laughs) when you say a little bit more often, you mean like most of the time. I'm like, why are you keeping that? We have that information. Well, I just, I just quite like it. But then Ingrid's going to come back to me now, aren't you? But then have you got, have you got any in your defense? Because I'm just going to say, why are you keeping all that stuff? Please stop. And what are you going to say? Because you're deleting everything and then you want me to find something that you know I have saved somewhere. <laughs> I know. So to be fair, we're, we're, we're polar opposites. Ingrid's an overkeeper and I'm an overdeleter. That much we will agree on. Yeah. I think what we're going to talk about now is we're going to talk about the different types of digital clutterer. Let's call it that. And I think you fall into category number one, Ingrid. Yeah which is an organized and systematic person. So you've got 
files folders it's not out of control it's completely systematic it's organized it's in control you've got file folders for everything you keep your inbox under control you delete your um, spam and junk folders all of those kind of things but you just have thousands and tens of thousands and maybe even hundreds of thousands of emails sitting there but they're all very very organized so you're an organized and systematic clutterer yeah i think that's definitely true and I think that that this is just sits really well with my character. I want to kind of save stuff, but I think I have to really work on that. I mean, it's I'm I'm glad I'm organized like that. I'm glad I've got everything in systems. I mean, even you know, in my normal paperwork, everything is in lever arch folders, and if it's categorized, it's I can find everything. But I think I keep hold of a little bit too much. But it doesn't look that way because everything is really organized. It looks like that way when I when you share your screen with me on Zoom, <laughs> <laughs> and I see how many folders you've got and how many things you've got in there. But anyway, we want we. This is not about you and I. This is about <laughs> our lovely listeners out there and what kind of digital clutterer are they? And so they might fall into the same category as you, where yeah. everything is meticulously organized, but you've got rather a lot of it. Yeah. And then we have the next category of, of um, digital clutterer. Mm -hmm. Is that what we're going to call it? Digital clutterer? Is that actually a term? But we is for this podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is more of a disorganized digital clutterer. So this is tends to be what we see more regularly within our work, isn't it, Ingrid? Is that people who are just completely out of control with emails, apps, contacts, there's just tons and tons of it in a random order and you look at if you can find anything these are the kind of people that have got six seven thousand emails sitting in their in basket and never delete anything and they're just completely out of control and know that they need to do something about it but struggle to find the time or the energy to do that so that is the second type of digital clutterer yeah i think you can see that a lot in desktop with with so many screenshots and, and downloads on their desktop and they can't see the wood for the trees, even if they actually know they have it, they couldn't find it because they, there's no system to it. So they don't know where to get started. And of course, yes, in an email inbox, you've got the search bar, which is probably underused and could be used more, but still, then there are so many documents that could and should have been deleted that are still in there, which takes it longer to look for stuff. So what you see in their houses, a lot of physical clutter also kind of goes through into their digital clutter. There's no system. It's unorganized. It takes long to look for something. If they want to find something, they don't even know where to start. So it kind of, it goes from their home as well on the computer and their digital life. Yeah, definitely. And it's hard as well, isn't it? It's hard to get a grip of that. That's it. it takes a concerted effort. You know, trying to tell somebody to take control of their digital clutter is like saying, go and declutter your entire house today. Because that's, that. you know, the things that we spoke about at the beginning, passwords, logins, contacts, Netflix shows, apps, documents, emails, files, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We have a lot of this stuff, thousands upon thousands upon thousands of things. And so to take that under control takes a concerted amount of time. It's not something that you can do in a day. It's with something that you, you need, need to either bite the bullet and sort of set the record straight almost and go back to first principles if you're completely out of control or you need to spend the time meticulously going through it and trying to work it out. So two different types of um, people, organized and disorganized. And so that's important to talk about. And so I think it's good to talk about the why a little bit now. So why do people cling on to things? And so really it's about anxiety and nervousness, isn't it? About letting go of something that you might need. So it's very similar to physical clutter, isn't it? In terms of our the psychology, the emotions, the habits that sit behind the why we keep digital clutter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's very much a just in case. You know, like people will keep paperwork for for forever and ever, just in case I need it. And it might be a water bill from 10 years ago. Nobody ever knows, but you never know if you might need it one day because you want to know what you paid 10 years ago for your water bill. Nobody's going to look at that, but I'm going to keep hold of it just in case. 
And it's the same with all these emails and folders and, and documents on your computer and on your desktop and your screenshots and your WhatsApp groups. I'm going to keep it just in case. And I think that's where it kind of starts to grow and grow and grow. And then getting back that genie in the bottle is like, that needs, that needs work. <laughs> Yeah, it does. And I think it's easier, isn't it, to keep something just in case in a digital format, because the reasons that we mentioned before, it's not physical stuff, it's not taking up valuable space. It doesn't, you know, yes, you might have to get a bigger computer. But other than that, in principle, it doesn't take up valuable space in your home. So it's not bothering you on a day to day basis. And so it is easier to keep that kind of stuff. I think the other thing that we wanted to talk about as well in terms of the why is that sometimes it spills over into work, doesn't it? And so where this becomes work related, we have a lot of psychology and emotion involved in work related matters that mean that we keep things as well. And so I'm talking about things like, well, I might need that one day if I ever need to hand it over to somebody else, or I need to keep that to demonstrate that I actually did do that thing that someone asked me to do six years ago, almost like um, a proof that you've done something. And so quite often in a work-related environment, there's a colossal amount of stuff that's kept. And we don't think it's going to cause any problems because generally it's on a work computer, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I think it all has to do with that. They feel like almost they're like the saver of information or something. You know, they, and of course, in, it used to all be on paperwork, but now it's all these digital files on, on, on computer screens. And if especially p- companies that are growing, they're trying to keep up with the way they have to store their information and keep their information though to find it back. And if you are an employee and you've kind of fallen foul of that documents kind of lost because the, the system wasn't growing quick enough as the company was growing you might feel yourself I'm a bit I'm the keeper of the information of this company if I and everybody comes to you for something because they know that you have it and it can kind of become a bit too much because you kind of hold on to everything and those drafts have to be deleted only the final documents but there have to be a lot of systems in place for that to happen Ingrid, has it dawned on you that you're the keeper of our information? <laughs> As you were talking about, I'm like, you, you said before, I keep it because you always ask me for things and then I can find them really easily. You're actually the keeper of information for the declutter hub, Ingrid. You do realise that, don't you? But anyway, <laughs> she's like talking about it. I'm like, you're talking about yourself. <laughs> but anyway... I can't believe we're doing a decluttering podcast when you're so bad at this. Anyway, no, you're not bad. You're not bad. And I don't want to, she does get rid of some things, but I just get rid of loads more. But anyway, right. Okay. So we've totally spoken about, this is making (laughs) me laugh so much. Anyway, we've spoken about digital clutter, what it is, a couple of different types of digital clutter and why people tend to keep things. So Uh, People are out there going, what's your big problem? Like, if it's organized, it's fine. I can find what I want. I've got stuff for work. It's just on the work computer. What's the big problem with this? Why do we need to tackle it, Ingrid? Well, I think, although we can't see it, all this information needs to be stored somewhere. And I think that's because that's kind of a bit like, out of sight, out of mind. And yes, of course, if you're listening to this and you've got like one tiny cloud, but there's like 6 billion people on this planet all with a small, a medium or a massive large cloud with lots and lots of stuff. And this stuff is not just floating around in our atmosphere. It has to be kept somewhere, which is a massive server fields I mean, there are machines where it has to be, I mean, we call it the cloud, but there is a machine somewhere that holds this information, right? I love that you think that everyone's got their own, Ingrid's got this idea that everyone's got their own little cloud floating around in the sky. (laughs) You not just the cloud and we all get a little bit of the cloud. Do you think you've got your own cloud? Well, you probably, to be fair, you've got that much information that you probably have got your own cloud, to be fair. But anyway, (laughs) I love the, the way your mind is working with the cloud. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. So 
we store that information, we store it on our hard drive, and of course, and if we store it on our own individual hard drive or on our phones, we understand for the most part how much stuff we're storing. But increasingly now we're going to cloud-based storage, aren't we? So we're storing it off-site somewhere. And as you rightly say, these servers need to be maintained and cooled down. And there are these massive servers somewhere. I don't know where they are, but they're <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> I just know because I read it and they'll listen to it in the news. But they're somewhere. And I'm sure somebody will know exactly where they are. But all I know is there's loads of really big servers somewhere holding all this information. And there's energy and environmental there's an environmental impact to keeping all that information, and particularly yeah. when probably, I don't know how much, I wouldn't like to hazard a guess, but I bet even in my own, if we think about our own individual storage, I bet that I could easily ditch 60% of what I've got. Yeah. And if we all are like that, then that's a whole amount of storage that's been s- stored on these big machines and cooled and affecting the environment. So yes. we need to think about that, don't we? Because sometimes it's just it, like you're saying, but it really is out of sight, out of mind, and we don't really think about it. Yeah, yeah. And I think I think that that kind of awareness, I think, is really coming. You know, I think when it was still all on paper, we could see that a filing cabinet or a lever arch file, so we can kind of see it. But now we can't see it anymore. But that doesn't mean it doesn't have to be maintained. And especially, I think, the cooling of those servers with massive air conditioning type of machines that absolutely eat up energy there comes a point where it, where that ends, you know, we have to take control of it ourselves. It's like, you know, we can say, oh, you know, with food waste, it's all the companies, that, but let's just start with, with throwing our, our, our banana skin into a, a food waste bin. We, what can we do ourselves? And what can we do ourselves is just deleting lots of emails that we don't need that eat up, that eat up space on your computer. But if you're not going to do anything with it, so this can be your contribution to a more environmentally friendly world. And, and I love that because it's something we can do. We, we have a direct impact on that. There's loads of things that are out of our control, but deleting lots of emails that we're never going to read anyway and unsubscribing from emails and deleting documents from your, from your uh, Google Drive or your computer that no longer serve you. Goodbye. Good riddance. I am not eat, I'm not using up this energy. And I think that must be a good thing. That must feel good. Oh, I'm seeing a new Ingrid coming. <laughs> I'm definitely seeing a whole new Ingrid coming. I'm so glad that I suggested this podcast. I mean, I didn't have an ulterior motive when I suggested it, Ingrid, as a, a topic. But now I'm thinking, yes, this was a genius move on my part. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> there were another couple of things that we wanted to talk about, weren't there? So, of course, the environmental issue is huge. There's also cost associated with keeping digital clutter. So paying for the cloud, if it's your employer that you're working with, They've got to pay for storage as well. We need to pay for bigger computers to store this stuff. And so we really need, you know, bigger phones. You know, we're like that with 32 gigabytes is not enough. Now we need 64 or 128. All of these things cost money. So there's a cost impact in the digital stuff that we are keeping, isn't there? And we need to think about that. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And I think... Uh, we, 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 were, we were doing a little challenge, weren't we? And I think somebody found like this tiny a uh, card that we used to be able to put into our cameras where we could like save our first digital photos. We could like hold like maybe a hundred photos. And now we're like a hundred. That's like nothing. <laughs> you know, it, the storage capacity has grown so much and our phones can do so much more. But you're right that the bigger package you want of something, the more you have to pay for it. It's as simple as that. I think it's interesting as well from our perspective, English. So not not sort of domestically, but in our Declutter Hub business, obviously a lot of the things that we um, deliver from a content perspective are big files. And so podcasts are big files. The videos that we use in our membership are big files and they have to be stored. And we have the raw file and then we have the edited file and there's different things that we have to keep. And so it's become so obvious to us over the past couple of years how much that costs because 
we have to pay to store all those things, don't we? So even our little business, the Declutter Hub, we spend a lot of money on storage, don't we, Ingrid? And we we can't decide to do otherwise because we need that stuff to run our business. But you'd be surprised, and this is hundreds, if not thousands of pounds that we have to pay to store data. And that's just little old us, isn't it, Ingrid? So mm-hmm. can you imagine what that's like for a huge um association so the yep. costs are huge but they were again they're a little bit hidden the environmental things are hidden because we're not quite sure where those servers are the costs are hidden because we don't see those do we and then of course what we've not spoken about is the security impact as well of keeping things beyond the time that we need to keep them or keeping things that we no longer require there's a security implication on that isn't there yeah you know what, I mean, they've, they've really tightened up all the rules about security and data and keeping of data. And of course, because hacking of personal data from people trying to hack people's accounts, it, all of those things. And the more information you have, the more interesting it is for somebody to try and hack you and get that information. And how often do we hear, you know, especially it, it's getting less now. People are getting smarter, but somebody leaving their laptop here in the tube with like loads of important information or somebody losing a thumb drive with loads of files or, you know, that's why it's so important to have all those passwords really, really solid and, and, and have all of that. But if you are a keeper of lots and lots of information, you have more risk of losing that data. You do, you do. So there's three kind of hidden things, really. And they are quite hidden, aren't they? Maybe not the security one, but the environmental side of it, the cost side of it, and the security side of it are three things that we really need to take into consideration when we just routinely keep digital stuff that we no longer require. Yeah, and you know what, Leslie, what we see a lot with us in the Declutter Hub is that our members start with the physical clutter in their houses, then move on to kind of the more paperwork and, and all the sorting that all about and, and their daily routines. And then you see also, then you see a step towards, I now want to sort out my digital clutter. It's so interesting, isn't it? We've seen several members do that and kind of go, I'm going to break down this project and I want to get my head around how I'm going to break it down. Just as like, I want to break down the, the a room project and a paperwork project, and I want to break down how am I going to do all this digital and what am I going to come across? And, and, and we love that, don't we? Advising on, think about this. Have you thought about the CDs with information somewhere in a drawer? Have you thought about your USB sticks? Have you thought about your folders in your computer? And I think once you start to get your head around your physical clutter, then you can later start to get around your head around all the digital clutter. Definitely. So we have talked about the type of digital clutter. We talk about why it's important. And I bet everyone's thinking, but how do you do it? And so, well, that's quite a big job is what we're saying. Um, as we say, it's something that potentially comes towards the end of your decluttering journey. We do have a couple of resources we wanted to point you to that we've, we've spoken about before in the podcast that might be quite useful. So episode 48 is all about dealing with your email clutter. So we give you specific guidelines on how to unsubscribe and delete emails in bulk. So episode 48 is a good one to listen to. And then episode 108, Ingrid interviewed the lovely Amy Payne about information overwhelm. So she talks about um, how people get overwhelmed with information. So that's a really a good one to listen to as well. Have we got anything else, Ingrid? Uh, yes, we also did a, a podcast episode 80. Uh, it was quite at the start of, of, of the global pandemic where we talk about um, what to declutter when the charity shops are closed. Because, of course, we couldn't suddenly bring out our stuff away. So then we gave lots of ideas on what you can declutter when you can't declutter stuff. So um, we gave some ideas and top tips for digital clutter as well. So if you want to kind of think, oh, this has really made me think this podcast. uh, I've got several things to do. Have a listen to that podcast for some ideas. So I'm glad we finished recording now, Ingrid, because um, now you can go and start tackling your emails. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, Leslie. <laughs> That's your project for, for this, this weekend. 75 million emails need to go out of your inbox. <laughs> I'm only joking. Do, we, we have a, a mantra here, which is do as we say and not as we do. That's the important thing. 
We are not perfect. Ingrid is not perfect in this digital world of clutter, are you, Ingrid? No, 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 definitely not. And um, I, I am a saver with stuff like that. So I, I have to listen to my own advice and um, listen to my own light bulb that I'm the work, the work keeper of the two of us. But <laughs> um, but yeah, that I need to press it. Del- I'm trying to be. Re- I'm I'm trying to slowly but surely. You're dragging me into the 21st century, Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> I know, exactly. Um, now, before we go, I wanted to tell to our lovely listeners that we are doing a challenge in the month of May. So this is now the 30th of April today. So in May, Leslie and I are doing our lovely wardrobe decluttering challenge, which we love so much. It is back. It is back. We did it last year and we loved it. So it is back. And um, we're going to start on Monday, the 10th of May. And you can sign up to join us for this five day challenge. So if you want to have more information, have a look at declutterhub.com forward slash wardrobe hyphen decluttering hyphen challenge. That is declutterhub.com forward slash wardrobe hyphen decluttering hyphen challenge. And you can find all the information there and you can sign up to join us. We're going to have a great week. We're going to declutter those wardrobes and get our head around what we have clothes wise. So, we can't see that. It's completely different than um, a digital uh, clutter, Leslie, but still lots and lots of fun. So I wanted to tell everybody that before, because every time we get, I, I missed your challenge. So we're now trying to remind you bef- well before the challenge starts, so you're not going to miss out. In your defense, Ingrid, what you have in digital clutter, I make up for in closed clutter. So... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah you've got a lot of emails I've got a lot of clothes so yeah let's just leave it there 50 50 square we're even Stevens <laughs> so there you go listeners the truth is being told in the podcast as per usual we really hope you've enjoyed listening and we can't wait for you to take action so tell us in our lovely Facebook group, the Declutter Hub community with Leslie and Ingrid, we would love to know from you, are you going to declutter some of your e- emails and your digital files after listening to this podcast? Come and tell us. Uh, we are on Instagram too, in case you'd like to find us there. And of course, if you're thinking to yourself, you know what, it is all nice digital clutter, but I need to do my wardrobes. I want to do my kitchen. I need to sort out toys and my books. I need to hang out with Ingrid and Leslie in this membership. Please come and join us. It is so much fun. And our members have fantastic results with our courses. So have a look at members.declutterhub.com if you'd like to know a little bit more about that. If you don't want to miss the next podcast episode, subscribe to the Declutter Hub podcast. It will pop into your notifications each Friday. So thanks for listening and we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Declutter Hub podcast. Check out declutterhub.com for more inspiration and don't forget to tune in next week.